Hey everyone, I'm Susan Calloway. Thank you for listening to Scar Stories. This inspirational podcast is an extension of my music as a singer and songwriter and my work as a spiritual mentor and artist coach. Today we continue with our four-week series, Getting Your Head Straight. Clinical psychologist Keith Harriman continues to join me as my co-host as we dive into some really important topics, depression, anxiety, trauma, and grief. Most of us have experienced at least one of these powerful emotions, and it's so easy to get stuck when we do. For this series, we are doing the podcast live so we can take questions and meet more of you who are listening. To join us for the live recording of Scar Stories, tune into my Facebook page at 5 p.m. EST every Wednesday. You can find the link in the show notes. Before we jump in, I just want to encourage you, if you enjoy this podcast, to leave us a rating and review in your podcast app. It really helps other people who are deciding whether they will take a chance and listen to Scar Stories. And as always, we love hearing feedback from our listeners too. So now, here's my conversation with Keith as we discuss grief, this difficult and overwhelming emotion, one that most of us will have to deal with at some point. Check this out. Awesome, you guys. Welcome to Scar Stories for those of you who are joining us. I am Susan Calloway. This is my co-host, Keith Harriman, and we are so happy to see you guys tonight. Uh, We've been doing a series, as most of you know, on kind of mental health, and we've talked about anxiety and we've talked about depression. And today we're going to talk about grief, which is really different than the other two that we've talked about, even though I think grief can cause maybe depression and anxiety. Yeah, Yeah. I'm sure. Um, But we're going to talk a little bit about that that tonight so thank you so much for joining us i see in the chat we've got leon my mod is here thank you so much leon for your hard work he's so faithful at every live event i have leon is amazing he's always modding and sharing information and links uh, for those of you who want more information and as always you guys can always dm us um there's a few ways to do that um you can you can send me a direct message on facebook um and keith i don't think we have your information for people to dm you we'll have to add that um, oh <laughs> that's exciting uh, my name on facebook I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah you have a facebook page probably yeah yeah all right I there don't you go. go on it you're too busy you're too busy like counseling everybody yeah <laughs> so awesome awesome you guys well thanks for joining us tonight and a big shout out to all my patreon members uh you guys are amazing i so appreciate uh, my private fan club members our big reason where I can even do a show like this and host it and create this kind of content. So I thank you guys for all your support. You're amazing. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, joining the private fan club at the end of the show today. But in the meantime, let's talk about this kind of interesting topic. Real fun so, topic. <laughs> I know it's kind of a depressing topic actually, yeah. but it's okay. It's, you know, I think um, grief is an interesting one. I think the thing that makes grief unique, you guys, is that grief is something that even if you don't struggle with maybe anxiety or depression, I don't think you can live on this planet through your life without experiencing grief at some point, because we all lose. Unless you're a sociopath, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I know there are people that don't feel grief, right? Or don't feel emotions. Yeah. And I mean, grief's interesting because most people think of bereavement or, you know, losing somebody, somebody dies that you're, you're, you know, a loved one. And, um, I just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> Grief can be more than uh, no. Nope. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna need a second. Here. <laughs> back up. That's all right. That's all right. Gather your thoughts. It's a gray, cloudy day in my mind. <laughs> I hear you. you see maybe you have some grief you just don't even know it <laughs> no <laughs> it's clouding you up no. anyway no but um I think that grief um grief is one of those things I don't think I I've always have felt sad through different things that have happened in my life but I remember the first time I think I have personally really experienced grief um was when I lost one of my dogs um I had dogs when I you know through my whole life I've always had dogs I'm a huge dog person and I remember when the first one that was really my dog died, I felt this just, I felt sick. It was this feeling I'd never felt. It was this horrible like loss and sadness and like, I'm never gonna see my dog again. And like, just, it was it was awful. And I, I remember kind of making a note of that. I'm like, wow, this is awful. Like, this is such an intense emotion and it was really hard to manage, you know? I mean, just the sadness of that. Um, You don't think it's ever gonna go away, you know? And it does, but you don't think that it's going to. And I think that's really 
that's really a hard uh, part of grief, you know, is, is... and it's, it's not like it's, uh, you know, the death of, you know, a, a pet or, you know, somebody that you care about have a relationship with. It's not like it's ever going to be like a good thing or a positive thing. It's always going to suck, but it, it's just going to suck less. Right. Well, it's almost like a thing. Don't you think this is true, Keith? Like grief in particular, it's almost like you learn to live with that pain and the pain kind of changes a little bit. It changes shape, you know, like you're, obviously it's not, you're not going to change what happened, but it's like, I still feel sad. Um, and I, I've, I've lost other, <laughs> I have lost people I love too. I mean, both my grandparents passed away and that was really hard because I was very close to them. And I, it was sad, but there's also, it's also something I learned to live with and learn to put it in a place where, you know, I could kind of deal with it and remember like the good things about the relationship and realize that so much of that relationship I still have with me and that I will see them again because they were Christians and, yeah. you know, and all of that. And I just, so, cause I love them very dearly, but before we get into all of the personal stuff though, tell us, I want to ask you, I'm going to drill Keith for a minute, ask him some pick, uh, questions about grief to kind of <sighs> educate us about it. Um, so as a, from your point of view, as a psychologist, can you give us like a kind of a working definition of grief? Like what is grief? Like, is um, there- I'm not going with the Webster's Dictionary uh, uh, memorization of definitions, but uh, essentially grief is the w- w- when you lose someone or something that you value immensely and that is it, it, it is, is kind of or is a unique kind of one of a kind thing, like irreplaceable thing. Um, and the loss is, is like a permanent one where it's like you're never going to get it back. Uh, or at least not get it back the same way. Um, and, and that just overwhelming sorrow and just, just, I mean, it, I, we're both Christians and, and um, I was reading a book on, uh, I don't know, way back, talking about Adam and Eve and all that, but um, essentially with the, the thing I took away from it was God didn't design us to die. So when, you know, we die when loved ones die. It's so traumatic and it's so like not okay. And it's never really okay that, you know, like we get overwhelmed and we're not sure, you know, what we're feeling, what we're supposed to do. It's just so like, what is this? This is so not right. And, uh, cause yeah, we're, we're, we weren't meant to die, but you know, sin, um, brought death into the world. So that's why we experience it. But you know, humans design was like, that's why it's so hard. It's like, no, this is right. a part a of the point. design. It's like unnatural, you know, doesn't, yeah. it never feels right. You know, right. So that's a good point. I never really thought about it like that, but yeah, cause it does, it feels really wrong. Like to have to like, let go of someone that we love or. Right. Whereas, you know, other things, you know, anxiety, depression, you can kind of, you know, do things to work through it, you know, coping skills, um, you know, other things you can, you can actively do things, but, but grief, it's kind of like, it's going to run its course. And there are things that can help, um, but it, it's going to be a, a unpredictable, um, you know, varying, uh, you know, experience for each person, you know, and it's going to be different, you know, for each each person. And it's kind of like, yeah, you, you can't really plan or prepare for it. It's just, it's going to happen, you know, the longer you live, you know, and the closer relationships and more meaningful relationships you have, especially, um, you know, when they, when you lose those relationships or when, you know, people pass away, that's when you're going to experience grief. And on the one hand, it's a sign that this was an important relationship and, and they ha- you valued it a lot, which is, which is good. I mean, that, that means you had a good, you know, that, you know, healthy relationship ideally with the person, but now, you know, you don't have the relationship and you just got to go, go through it when you go through it and it sucks right it's unavoidable <laughs> but hopefully we're gonna we're gonna off you guys more than grief sucks tonight. it sucks bye <laughs> exactly but it is it's awful i mean i really remember that like you know in my experience with it and i'm sure you guys can share that it's a pretty awful feeling i think it's probably in fact of all the emotions i felt as an artist and i'm such a sensitive person because of that you know and i i tend to feel emotions pretty at a pretty heightened uh degree i think because i am a sensitive person and part of what makes me hopefully good at what I do, but it's also kind of a curse because it makes you really feel emotions deeply. And I think grief is probably the worst one. I think it's, and I think that alone has made me even more compassionate when I have friends around me that have lost 
uh, friends or family members or children, or I've had, you know, especially this year, there's been a, quite a lot of people in my life that have lost, you know, some people. And I think through COVID, I'm sure many people maybe even listening to this have maybe lost someone that they love uh, because of COVID or know someone that has. And so our prayers go out to you guys, because I know it's very, you know, it's not a fun experience to go through. Um, you know, as we think about grief, though, it doesn't always have to be death. I mean, sometimes it's losing a job or even a relationship that meant something to us. So is there, yeah. have you noticed a difference in like some of the people that you counsel, like dealing with grief? Um, is there a difference in how you counsel someone versus like if they've lost someone through like death versus just a broken relationship or maybe a job loss or something? Yeah. I mean, like with, with, job loss or or loss of a lifestyle or you know a flood you know destroys all your stuff um or yeah a relationship ends you know all, all those things you can you know there'll be a time when you'll be able to pursue something similar to that um so it's kind of it's not that permanent um experience but it's still very devastating you know or like you know i, I haven't Wow. Yeah. Like an athlete, when they're no longer able to play the you know, sport they love, that that's a huge, you know, grieving moment because it's like life will, will never be the same as it was before. And I loved what was before. And so it can be like traumatizing, but, you know, hopefully you figure out a way to, you know, use, you know, your sports knowledge and you know, love of, you know, whatever game it is and and still be a part of that world. Um, but, you know, with 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 when people die, uh, you know, permanent relationship ending, you know, people are unique, uh, we're very similar, but we're each still unique. So those relationships are always unique and special and, and they're, they're not re replaceable. You can't just substitute. And, and um, if you do, that's really unhealthy. Uh, like right. parents lose a child and they have another child and they basically, you know, treat them like the lost child that, that, right. that results in all types of do you see things. stuff like that in your practice ever? Um, not offhand, <laughs> I can think of. I right. know, been so many kids, so many uh, right. adoptions, so many split <laughs> homes. I'm like, right. the big mess. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. But but yeah, the I, I yeah I've had clients like you know lose uh, you know uh, boyfriend. Uh, uh, and parents, uh, their husband of like, you know, over 50 years and they couldn't even be with them for the, like the last year of their life because of COVID. Right. Yeah, that's like when I think when I have clients that talk about that and I and I, I hear that or see them, you know, grieving in person, that's when I start to, to really feel the the, you know, wait. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's one of the hardest thing and time and situation in as a therapist is when somebody is is in the midst of grieving loss of a, of a loved one it, that's like the hardest thing yeah. to to watch right oh i bet i bet you know grief seems to affect everyone really differently that's something i've noticed like i've noticed there's sometimes there are people who i don't know like they kind of almost try to laugh it off or they they want to make their lives normal so badly that they yeah. sort of bury it and then yeah. but then it comes out later and then yep. there's people who are just they can't function for like six months and they're like you know what i mean like what or longer yeah right so what is there anything that like what causes us to do that like that either we shut down and we just kind of almost are in denial of it right you know? I, I we've all heard of you know five stages of grief forever and no tell us that's what i want to talk about oh <laughs> crap remember? i don't think i've memorized <laughs> the five stages um, of grief. <laughs> Google, uh, <laughs> but you know, some people experience, you know, all or some, um, of, of, of those, um, you know, it's like denial, bargaining, um, acceptance, uh, and the other ones. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, what was the question? <laughs> no, we're talking about grief, like the, uh, what are the stages of grief or what are the how everyone it affects people differently oh like, yeah like some people it's like they can really deal with it like right away and then some people sort of put it off and they're like i don't want to you know they almost just right. want to get back to their normal life and they almost put up a wall and bury it so so, so so people that in general have trouble or you know aren't connected well and don't know how to you know deal with and process and express their emotions in general um 
are probably going to be the ones that are, you know, in, in denial and uh, just trying to, to move on with life. And, um, it, you know, they, they may be kind of forcing it down, the feelings down, because uh, it, you know, I mean, there's all different types of things that go on. Like some people believe if I, you know, say it out loud, then it becomes real. Or, you know, if, if I tell people how I'm feeling, then that'll just make them sad. And I don't want to put that on them. But again, like we talked about in other, you know, episodes, it, healthy relationships, these are the times when, you know, you, you, you need the support, you need to tell, you know, the people you're close with how you're feeling. And for grief, uh, you know, tell them what they can do, because a lot of times people don't know what to do. And they're like, well, they're in a better place now, or his, his suffering's over. And, you know, that doesn't help at all. Just basically, you know, being with them physically, just, just sitting next to them and putting an arm around them, or just, you know, letting them know, hey, you know, you know, let me know if you need to talk or, you know, let, let me know, you know, what you need. Just just being there uh, and just being like, yeah, this really sucks. I, I, have, I can't imagine what it's like for you. Um, the grieving person, if they know if they, if they have someone that, that's just there with them because um, they know the other person doesn't know how they're feeling, but just just not being alone. Um, that's the important part. And then, you know, whenever the grieving person, you know, you know, wants to talk about it or feels like, you know, maybe talking more about it, um, being available to them, that then they'll have a conversation with you or someone else. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the very least, just just be with somebody and, and shut your mouth because people try to talk and they're right. like, I don't, this is uncomfortable. I don't know what to say. I want to fix the problem. It's hard to watch my, you know, loved one grieve and I just want to, you know, make them feel better. But it's grief. They're right. going to have to experience it. Just don't leave them alone. Right. That's a really good point. Cause I think, um, I actually heard a podcast about this recently and they were talking about how, you know, we tend to give these trite answers when people are going through awful things like it'll be okay. Or, you know, it'll, I don't know. And, and it may be true. Yeah. And it, yeah, for sure. For sure. It might be true. And it is because we know that somehow things do sort of work out to some degree and we do recover. We have this amazing, I'm always amazed at, the human spirit about how much we can really recover, even when it seems like we can't <laughs> and that we're still able to sort of dig deep, you know, and to find a way through some of this stuff. And, yeah. and that's where I think for me, I mean, I know you guys have heard me say this and you'll hear me keep saying it is that I think having a strong spiritual life is such a important part of that because we are spiritual beings. And if you have that connection, that's such a, a big source of strength. I know for me, for the moments I've had, you know trying to recover from grief myself so that's really you know it is it's hard to like because you you don't know what to say and sometimes just your presence is don't underestimate maybe your presence you know whether that's yeah. you know because i know we all know people that are going through stuff in fact i know one of my patreon members steven has a friend that just lost someone recently so i know that's so hard and i know that you're going to be with your friend because you're awesome um just kind of being with your friend through the situation is is a huge thing you know and i think we underestimate that our presence is really sometimes it's not our words it's just our presence sometimes it can make a difference you know so yeah no that's cool um you know one of the other things about grief i was thinking about is well this is just something you can tell me if you think what you think about this when i um when i was going through a loss that i was experiencing one of the things that helped me because i was feeling so depressed about it and i just for me it just got to a thing where i think if you're already struggling with maybe some other things in your life and i know you guys maybe can relate where maybe you're going through a season of life where you've got some discouraging things happening and it, it takes a lot of energy to just kind of deal with life in general but then you have a loss that does cause grief and it almost feels like you know it's the mul it's the multiplicity of stressors that can hurt us the most you know what i mean it's it's not even just sometimes one thing it's just the combination of like you can't really carry all of this and i think one thing that really helped me in my journey um was i got up every day and i let myself like be as sad as i wanted to for half an hour and i would get up before work and i would just like i would cry about it i wrote in my journal i would pray i would like read scripture i would read you know there was a book a couple books i was reading at the time that kind of helped me and, and encouraged me and i would just let myself have that time and at the end of that 30 minutes i would be like i would say a prayer and i'd be like okay i'm gonna like put this down i'm gonna leave it here till tomorrow and i'm gonna go out and have a good day because i do want to celebrate the fact that i even had this person in my life that i love so much and even though i'm sad that they're not with me i'm gonna 
remember all the love and all the all the amazing things they brought to my life and i'm going to live that out today and make them proud of me because i know that's what they would want me to do and that's sort of what i did and i just kept doing that every day and it got better like it felt better yeah. to do that so, and, and when did you start doing where you you did like you limited yourself to like a half hour like i don't know like probably a week after just because i felt like i was just i wanted i felt like if i got back more in a schedule i would feel better because i feel like that's the other thing is like when you're going through grief and you're feeling awful about stuff it's really easy just to start pulling away from everything in your life and i think yeah. that if you can at least add some normalcy back like whether it's work or, or trying to inject things that you do enjoy even though you're feeling awful and sad and all that stuff if you can like go you know like for me like working out if you can go for a run get outside um see a friend uh try to do like i love music so i would be like spending time practicing and working on music so i try to kind of create a schedule for myself and it was like you know do your day like try to get back maybe you can't do it full capacity but do part of it you know get had you initially allowed yourself to to like grieve and and to like experience your what you were feeling um you know yes after it happened and i did but it, but i yeah. didn't i kind of i tried to like not let it go on i mean this was just for me and obviously there's different i mean there are different levels of grief i did not lose a child i mean i think there's different loss levels i mean and and even though it was terrible losing like one of my grandparents for example because they were really close at, to me and i they were like second parents in a lot of ways so that was really hard but at the same time i, I don't know if i would equate it to someone losing a partner or losing a child. I mean, it's or, however you experience yeah, it. Yeah, true, true. But I'm just for me, because I don't want to like also be idealistic of like, yeah, if you just, you know, went through this horrible, like, you know, loss of. Like, I lost my cell phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, but it was, it was, you know, definitely, it was still hard. But I, um, so I think it's def different depending on the, the degree of loss that maybe you're feeling or experiencing. But for me, it just sort of helped me um, feel like I had a little more control, like right. I was getting some control back. And, reminded me of all the things I have to live for because I think that's the other thing you start feeling like right. you know because you can really spiral you know and I think those are sort of my things that help me well, acknowledge it, the grief but not let it just run my life right and, and so the, the key is is you know you know whether it's a, a week or you know whatever the, your time period is but like you know a week couple weeks after let's say you lose some, somebody like uh, um they care about and allow yourself to to express and feel emotions and those can come at random times you know you could be in the middle of a grocery store and then all of a sudden you just break down crying let yourself do those things um you know a, a, as much as you need to especially during like the, the first couple of weeks but then yeah once you feel like you know you have allowed yourself you, you you've grieved you've sobbed you've wept you know you, you, you've had all you know all that unfiltered just let it out but you're still kind of keep keep you feel like stuck in in that kind of grief then yeah you you, you limit it by by setting you know aside you know a time you know 30 minutes is good uh you know during during the day when it's like okay i will allow myself to think about it, experience all the those emotions and and think about that person i lost and 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 grieve and then yeah get on get on with your day because by doing that, you're you're still acknowledging that you're having these emotions and feelings, but you're also, you know, acknowledging that okay, um, they're not they're not new feelings that I was you know suppressing and, and I haven't allowed you know to to speak to to get themselves out, so they've had their chance. So I, I I I can limit it and it's okay. It's not like it's going to rear its head later on. And then you get back to your life because yeah you, you your life is going to be different it's going to look different after the loss of a right. significant relationship and yeah it, but life does go on and life can still be filled with joy and you know it, it's not always going to be miserable and you know you grieving and so yeah it is important to to be like okay right. let's see what this new life looks like right and don't you think too that like it's like what we've said with all these different things whether it's anxiety or depression because I know it applies to these things too, but grief, I think, um, I know there is like grief support groups too. And I think that can be maybe helpful because- Grief share, yeah. I don't know if it's dot .com or dot .org, but gr grief share is a good one. Um, go to the website and they have, you know, links to different things and, and materials. But yeah, there are, are so many support groups and specific support groups, a lot for parents, you know, uh, parents who've lost, you know, kids from drug overdose. Um, you know, there's so many different support groups. So yeah, just, check out grief share and then, you know, check out some other, you know, right.
Google support groups. There's a right. lot of them, and you'll probably find one that, that fits your particular uh, need. Right. Um, but you know, you, you can also get a, a lot or you know similar support just by being with people and maybe people that knew the same you know person, and you can kind of just you know talk about it with them, and you know maybe they're feeling the same similar things that you are. Um, that can be really supportive being with people that are also experiencing that same loss. Right. Right. No, it seems like that would, because I think there's something about, um, there's something isolating. I think about grief, you know, Oh, thank you. <laughs> Look at Leon. He's so awesome. Um, there's something isolating about grief and really all the emotions we've been talking about sort of in this mental health series, you guys, I think that's, what's, that's kind of the lie of a mental health challenge is that, you know, because I'm feeling this bad emotion, whether it's anxiety or trauma or depression or grief, that it makes us want to cover up and we want to isolate. And I think, yeah. and when really the opposite is what's going to help us heal. And so yeah. that's what I love about doing a show like this and why we wanted to do something live is so we could sort of interact with you guys more on some of these subjects and talk to you and hear your stories or hear your questions about it. Um, and grief is one of those, it's a unique one because it's not, um, like Keith has said, it's not something that um, we really can become a victim of it with, you know, randomly, you know, just depending because of life, you know, it's like yeah. it's a hard, it's a hard one to avoid, you know, not, not all of us will experience anxiety, not all of us will experience depression, though most of us maybe will dabble yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with some of that, a little, taste of a little taste of it, but I mean, grief's one that you really can't dodge, you know, I mean, you really can't because it's like we're all going to lose it's just the nature of life, unfortunately. You know? If you have important relationships as with people, but if you value things and you know things mean a lot to you, and you lose, yeah, you know, like a, with people, they're going to die at some point. It's either going to be you or them. And you know, it, right. the closer you are in relationships, that's like, yeah, you are going to experience grief. So some people think like if they experience maybe the loss of a, a close relationship. Um, or they just don't want to feel like they're like, I don't like when this person dies, it's going to be miserable and awful. Like, I, I don't want to do that. So they kind of limit themselves in the relationship or back up or try not to get too, too close. Um, cause prepare, they're trying to prepare for, you know, when they, they inevitably lose them or other people have experienced abandonment and, it, you know, in relationships, they're like, I, they dread that abandoning feeling like if you're dating somebody and you're like, Oh, I, I know they're going to leave at some point. And you know, they're just a lot of times they'll just end the relationship preemptively with, with no real reason, just because they can't stand, you know, thinking about waiting for that to happen. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, we, <laughs> I totally get it. Well, yeah, because we try to dodge. No, look, none of us like to feel crappy emotions, right? I mean, isn't that something you guys can all agree that we we would agree on this you know none of us yeah. like to feel this stuff because it's uncomfortable you know and i think one thing i've learned in my my journey is that the more even though these emotions that we're talking about are so uncomfortable and hard i think that they have so much to teach us if we will you know kind of sit in that for a minute whether no matter how dark or, or bad it feels for a minute and really try to experience it and just realize it's going to wash over you but it's not always going to feel this way and that you can learn something from it and it can right. it can be used for something good in your life if you let it and i think that's something i've learned too that that because listen if we didn't feel grief if i didn't go through some of these experiences with grief even just losing some people in my love and my family even losing my pets which i know to some of you might sound nuts but they you know honestly those were really hard because they were like my kids i don't have yeah. my own children so that is um, my dogs are like my my children and they were really hard losses they were one of them in particular was a dog that i only had for four years that had cancer and i just i fought really hard mm. to save her and it was just it was awful um i was just devastated but real quick on that um pets getting pets like especially if you're a parent of, of a kid getting pets because because pets you know die um and having you know having the opportunity w with your kids to to for them to experience death in, in a much less um you know tragic version than you know losing a loved you know human uh relationship um those are good important things to have which is why you know having a having a pet that you know is going to die in like uh hopefully not a week but you know a little <laughs> longer 
uh, you know, a is, week. It, it, is good because then kids can. Get, Fourteen you know. years, man. I mean, a goldfish, you know. <laughs> right. But but, but that, that was the first time I think I experienced grief was when yeah I lost my my cats that had to be put down. I remember coming home from church and my mom told me that she had to go you know put them down. My one cat had like liver failure, the other ate too much balloon ribbon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I remember on the phone, I was like, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I hung up and then I bawled my eyes out the entire way home and I should have pulled over, but man, I had never cried that much in my life. Right. And, but, but by the time I got home, I was, I was good composed and I had let it all out and, you know, it still su sucks to think about it, but you know, I, it was good for me to, to let, let that out and sure. Yeah. So go, yeah. go on with the pets. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally okay. No, but what I was going to say is that because I think, you know, for me experiencing that stuff as hard as it was, it's, uh, it's given me a lot more um, capacity and the tools to help other people around me. Like right now, I had a friend that just lost a sister to cancer. I've had, I have a friend that lost her husband. I have a friend who, um, lost a child recently to a drug overdose. I have, you know, I mean, there's just, I could go on. There's probably like four or five situations just in the last six months that I've experienced. And I feel like, not that I can fix any of this for, for any of these dear people in my life, but the fact that I have felt grief and I've tasted it, it makes me, it increases my compassion and it increases my desire. Empathy. Yeah, empathy. Yeah. It, it increases my desire to help. And I sort of know what might help you know what i mean because you know like when you were in it what helped you and and you you know what i mean you're able to sort of come alongside them in a way that if you haven't felt right. that you don't really know how you know what i mean right yeah and you become a yeah i mean because like different things happen like you know we were talking about earlier before we got on the the school shooting well, it, in michigan there was a school shooting yesterday yeah we had a big tragedy here some of you guys might know that some of you maybe not that are joining us in other countries, but we had, we had a really tragic school shooting yesterday and three kids were killed and there's eight that are in the hospital that were injured. So, right. Which I was talking with a client about, cause he, he was feeling like he was at work when they found out and he's, he's like, my coworkers were reacting like with way more emotions and, and feelings that, than I was, I was kind of like, you know, indifferent, which I can relate to. And it's kind of like, you know, it, if you had kids, you, you'd probably experience it a lot differently. Um, if you, if you, you know, knew somebody from that school, if you went to that school, if you're familiar with even just that area, you know, you'd probably have a lot more feelings or if you, you know, been through another, you know, school shooting or, or loss of a, you know, seeing parents go through loss of a kid, you know, more things that can connect you to these, these horrible situations, the more you're, you're likely to, to have emotions and, and then, yeah, be able to empathize and be like, oh, I bet, you know, so-and-so people that are, are connected with this are, are probably feeling, you know, this way. And, you know, like you right. said, I, I may need to, you know, help them out during this time um, where, you know, lesser extent, you know, um, situations, you know, you may, you may not realize, oh, oh, this person might need help. Like I, I can, right. I might need to like bring them dinner, you know, that, that that's right. always huge. Help them do daily stuff is huge. Sometimes. Right. Well, that brings up a good point too, because I think one thing that we always have to remember with all this stuff is no matter what we're going through, that love really is a healing factor, you know, and that's something that we can offer each other, you know, and that's something I love about the community that I have with so many of you online is that we can support each other and be there for each other because that's so important, you know, and that makes a huge difference, you know. And I hope that you always know for anyone that's hearing this, if you're interested in getting involved in my online community, um, I do have a, a private fan club. It's right now it's on Patreon. It's going to be moving to a different platform, um, but you can certainly um, check that out. We would love to have you. Um, it's a really amazing group of people. We've really become like a family and I love that about it. And when there's a lot of love and support that we can offer each other for whatever anyone's going through. So that can be a great thing. Plus there's other stuff, but um Aside from that, though, we're happy that you guys could join us to talk about this. Oh, I, yes. Real quick, I, 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 yeah, can't, yeah. I can't mean to bring this up, but, okay. and uh, I, I'm probably going to forget if I don't bring it up now. <laughs> but um, so it, what, when I lost my great grandma, when she died, um, it, it was uh, after that that I was started thinking about, you know, I, I was like probably like 20 or something. Um, but it's so funny, like, like growing up, I'm like, eh, I don't really talk to my grandparents. So, you know, I don't really, you know, ask them about, you know, their life or, you know, get to know them just because like I'm a kid, they're an adult that, you know, you don't, you don't right. really mix with, 
with, with that age gap. Um, but then the more, the older I became and, you know, as an adult when, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm an adult, they're an adult. Also like th they are, you know, they live during the, the times when, you know, I like a lot of the, that era of movies or whatever it is. And, you know, when I lost my great grandma, I was like, man, I wish I would have talked to her about some of that stuff. Like we could have like totally talked about all those old movies that no one else likes, but, but me and she was probably around when they were in theaters and it's just different things like that, like get to know them. And I'm like, crap. And so since then, you know, I've been, you know, valuing family and like, you know, spending time with my grandma and, you know, it just, just kind of sucks. Like at least, uh, you know, for me and, and probably a good amount of other people, it's like, you don't really appreciate and you don't really start growing the relationships um with like family or, or just a, any older you know people that are in, in relationships you don't you don't really realize the value and you need to make you know use of the time because they are going to die a lot earlier than you are and you won't have you know a, endless amount of time to to get to know them and it's like right i need to make you know right make use of the time we have right now because yeah they right. aren't going to be here well, that's another great takeaway I think you guys is that you know even though grief is a hard thing and it is something I know that we've all experienced if you haven't I know you will at some point unfortunately that that's a great takeaway because it, it does sort of remind you what really matters and what's important you know and I think so many times especially the world that we live in we tend to value all the wrong things you know we're always trying to get ahead we like we're so busy and we just celebrate like basically overbooking our schedules and in this state of just you know, constantly working and never taking time off. Yeah. And we don't really value relationships like we should, you know, and we don't connect with people. And we think like, even with all these online tools, it's like some of some of the tools we have, it's like, it's kind of like we're connecting, but are we really, you know, and it's, and there still needs to be that one-on-one -on -one connection where we see each other and where we like really have that intimate connection. You know, I, 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 I like to view each person as you know they, they they have a a book you know they have a story that's one of a kind that when they die it disappears disintegrates forever and so like i want i want to know you know what's in that book you know i want to hear like you know the events the interesting things that happen in that book which is you know their life experience because when they die it's gone. Um, you know, parts of it may be written down, but you're, you're not going to get it, you know, directly from the person. And it's like, this is a one of a kind book that, you know, you're never going to be able to, to, to read again. Um, you know, once they're gone. Right. Right. No, it's really important though, but we do need to really value those relationships that we have, you know, cause they're, they're gifts to us really, you know, like our, whether it's family, yeah. friends, and I know some people out there don't have maybe close family, you know, our, our world's gotten kind of crazy that way, like where families are so broken up and not everyone in our family is maybe someone we're close to. And I think it's, you know, it makes it sometimes harder to value those relationships or spend time because it's kind of bittersweet, you know, or, um, or like, I, like, or, or some, you know, grandparents or even parents, they may not want, they may tell you, like, don't ask about my business when you ask them, you know, <laughs> right. so what would you do when you were a kid? You know, it's like a lot of, you know, some of them may be like very protective and not open and don't want, you know, to have that discussion, which sucks. Um, but I, you know, still encourage you to try and right. get them to, to open up because it'd be good for them to. Um, but I mean, that that is out there. And that that's sad to hear about like grandparents right. that are like, I'm not going to tell you anything. That's my business. Like, right. That's what? funny. Yeah. My grandparents weren't like that at all. They were, they told me all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I have so many stories from them, which is, I'm very uh, blessed for that. So anyway, well, cool. Well, I have a, a question just to kind of, I know we're talking about, about lots of things uh, right now, but um, just to talk more about grief in particular, um, Keith, tell us like, cause we've talked a little bit tonight about, you know, what grief really is and what it's caused by that. It's not always, you know, necessarily <coughs> It's not always, that's um, no, okay. Um, it's not always losing someone through death. It can be also just losing other types of loss that we experience um, yeah. and that there's a way to cope with it, you know, and there's a healthy way to grieve and that we need to take time for it, obviously, because it does, it does take time out of our lives to spend this time grieving. Um, but the other piece of this I was just kind of curious about is how do we know when it starts becoming unhealthy grieving? Like, where do we, know, you know, what are some of the signs of like, if it's we're maybe taking too long to recover or we start going into maybe a dysfunctional place with our grief how do we what are some signs of that so so like with any um you know uh mental disorder or um you know psychological 
issue that becomes a, a problem that, that needs to be addressed. It, it's if like, you know, you're, you're, you're not taking care of your, your health, your physical health. Um, you're not uh, maintaining relationships. Uh, you're, you're you lost your job because you're just, you don't want to leave the house. Um, when, when there start being significant consequences in, in those realms, um, then it's like, okay, now, now you need to do something. Now the people around you need to step up and, and, you know, kind of get you to help yourself. Um, cause you, you, you know, when you're grieving and it turns into depression, yeah, you're, you're, it's gonna be really hard to, to motivate, to get up and, and do things. Cause it all feels uncomfortable. Um, yeah, that's good. It's, that's good advice, which is similar to some of the other things we've talked about. So it's like, we know that when these emotions become so disruptive to our life that we can't work and we can't, we're not taking care of ourselves. And we're just, it's like really running our life, you know, instead of us running our life, this huge emotion is running our life. Then we know we've got to do something. Well, And, and if you, <laughs> and if you haven't allowed yourself to, to express an experience and feel that um, those emotions, like if you're just bottling it up, like, you know, for the longest time, and even that, still like, you know, men, it's like, oh, men don't cry, you know, they don't experience uh, sadness, they just, you know, dust off and, and keep on going. Uh, nothing affects them. It's like, no, it does. Um, even if you don't think it does, just think of those those emotions that, that you haven't allowed to to be exp you haven't expressed and haven't allowed yourself to to process and experience as you know, a, a body that's, you know, a zombie waiting to, you know, claw its way out of the dirt and attack you or other people around you, because that's what what happens. And it usually comes out in like anger and uh, just you let it out at everyone else. Um, and it comes out in so many unhealthy ways. Um, and, and it, you know, the, the stronger the emotion that you're suppressing, you know, the stronger the, um, you know, uh, I don't know, call it uh uh, other emotion, <laughs> like the, str the stronger the sadness that, right, or right. grieving that you're not expressing, the the stronger the the anger and, and rage, or you know, uh, sure. physical abuse, or you know, you may drink or, or do drugs more and more, just trying to, you know, kind of silence the that that voice in in your head that's that's like, hey, I need I need I need to be heard, and you know, I need you know you to allow me me, which is the emotion, to come out. And, you know, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people do, you know, en right. engage in addictions and sure. Well, what are um, just a, another thing we could add to this today is what are some healthy ways? I mean, we've touched on a couple, but what are some healthy ways that we can kind of work through grief? And we talk I kind of shared my little system of like after, you know, I've been depressed for a couple of weeks or something to actually start structuring my day where I have like my time that I grieve about something and then maybe I write in a journal and I pray. That's one suggestion i know you brought yeah. a book with you and i want you to show everybody oh. this so this is a book that uh keith is bringing that he's been reading he said is great um yeah we'll put the link in the Whoops. show notes that's well, too bright uh, I know. uh um, it's called uh, i wasn't ready to say goodbye surviving coping and healing after the sudden death of a loved one uh by brooke noel and pamela d blair or phd um but yeah i, I got this one recently because a client you know boyfriend had died from uh heroin overdose unexpected you know unexpectedly um and you know i found this book and then also other therapists who've dealt with a lot of grief and had clients like they also recommended this book which is funny because I, I just ordered it like the week before and i'm like hey well, what do you recommend for grief and, and this book i'm like oh i already got it <laughs> that's funny um but but yeah i've i've been listening to the audio book so if you have audible you can get it uh that's my preferred way of reading or not reading <laughs> But I yeah, the a, a lot of really good stuff. Um, it, it, one of the chapters that they said a lot of people get benefit from is like myths, you know, myths about grief, and, and that can help clear things up if mm -hmm. you're going through grief. Because don't you think it's good too when we're when we're trying to grieve in a healthy way because we do want to recover, we don't want to feel like this forever. That we have some of these tools. So like reading a book is good because it's something proactive that we can kind of take control. Like I know that's for me. That's a big thing. I think. I think one thing that I hate about the experience of grief is it's this lack of control. It's like something that you did not want to happen that you could not stop. That you know there was nothing yeah. that you could have done. Right. And I think it feels it makes life feel chaotic to me. You know, like and I think yeah. that's where I like to do my little like, you know, spending this time with something I could control. Like in the morning, you know what I mean? Of saying I'm gonna, or like reading a book. It's like something proactive that you can take that energy and all that 
whatever you're feeling, the anger, the sadness, and be channeling it into a, an activity that you know is going to help you. Or the very least distract right? you. Right. You know, if, you know, you've already expressed those, those emotions. And also like uh, with this book and support groups, just hearing other people talk about their experiences of grief and just, you know, knowing that, oh, you know, other people are, have experienced this and they are experiencing this and they, they are at different stages of it. And, you know, there's people that have gotten, you know, gotten through it and, you know, here's what, what helped them just kind of knowing like, oh, this is something that humans have been experiencing forever. And, you know, it's not new and it's not unique to you. And it's, you know, it's not that, oh, no one's ever going to really, I mean, no one's ever going to quite un understand fully, you know, what each person experiences, but I mean, they can, you know, really relate a lot. Um, just knowing you're not alone. Again, it's, it's the not being alone, being, you know, making sure that you're, when you're going through grief, I, I, I said, you know, I, I suggest just be with people as much as you can, really. It doesn't mean you have to talk with them or do things, but just have, make sure people are around you and that, you know, you're around people and, you know, continuing those relationships. Um, Cause it'd be so easy to just cut, you know, stop investing in these relationships, cut off all relationships. Then they eventually, you know, wither up and, and right. go away. And then you don't have any relationships and, yeah, you're probably not going to grieve again, but you're also going to have a miserable life. Right, right. Well, I think, you know, I think it's really dangerous to self isolate. And I just I want to just touch on that really quick. And then I want to open up for questions from you guys. But I think, um, you know, self isolating is something I really relate to, because I that's what I tend to do when I'm feeling really bad about stuff, I, I just want to kind of shut everybody out. And I think maybe there's a, a moment for that that's appropriate. Yeah. Sometimes being alone can be okay. But right. there's also a point where really letting other people in and giving, especially people that care about you, letting people sort of be in that moment, you can, it can also do something really beautiful in your friendships and relationships, because by letting yeah. someone into that dark space, when you're vulnerable, that binds us to people. It, it deepens. A shared significant moment right. in, in your life. Exactly. It, somebody else is, is, is there with you. Exactly. Which can be really powerful. Oh you know? yeah. And, so, uh, just a few other things before you take questions. Um, you know, a few things that, that are, are good to do, especially if someone, you know, died and you, you didn't have time to have that last conversation with them, or, you know, you're still having all these feelings, questions, things you want to tell them, you know, a good thing to do is just, you know, write, write it out, uh, you know, in a letter and, you know, go to their grave site and read it out loud. And then, you know, you can, you can burn it or, you know, throw it away, whatever you want to do. Um, or even just write the letter and kind of, in your mind or even out loud, you know, you know, get by yourself and just kind of speak out loud, like as if you're speaking to them and, and just let them know how you're feeling and everything. And that, that could be for not only the, the good, healthy relationships, but also a lot of, a lot of people that have parents that were abusive and, and not good people, they, they struggle when they, they pass away. Like I feel sad and grief. I'm grieving, but like, they weren't good people. I didn't like them. <laughs> and so kind of just writing you confused. Yeah, yeah. Writing out every, you know, just writing out what you're feeling. You don't, you don't have to know why, or, you know, give, you know, a good reason why you're feeling it. Just, just write it out. Um, and you know, it, same with journaling, just kind of, you don't have to know why you're feeling it. Just write out how you're feeling. Doesn't have to be complete sentences. You, you know, it could be words or pictures, just, just get it all out there. And one last thing, um, if you notice, you keep having like, you know, memories or especially memories of, of, you know, if you find like, you know, someone dead before anybody else, uh, that can be really, really traumatic. But even just think about memories that have a lot of energy, you know, from the past that, that you it just, you just keep popping in your head after you lose somebody, writing it down in as much detail as you, as you can. And then whatever you want to do with that, you know, set it aside or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, getting that out of your head, getting that, those, those high, you know, high charged memories out on paper, you, your, your mind gets some relief and it, and it stops bugging you and reminding you about it as much. Cause it, it, it basically, you know, telling you, Hey, this is an important thing that happened. Don't ever forget it. And when you get it on paper, your mind's like, Oh, okay. I know somebody else, something else is, you know, holding this memory, this important event. So we don't need to be the only ones remembering it. And it, right. it, it's kind right. of, it's amazing how much you, you can, it'll, right. it'll quiet it down and take the energy out of it. That's awesome. 
No, that's those are some great, uh, really encouraging words, and I appreciate Keith sharing those with us tonight. And I, I know it's a sort of a hard subject, you guys. It's kind of a dark one, so we apologize. We don't want to like bring a dark cloud to like the world here with talking about grief. But at the same time, I think it's an important one because it's something that we deal with, right? And it's something that we have to face, and especially considering everything that's happened this last year, even with COVID. And then I know, look, life goes on despite COVID, and there's still you know, hard things that are happening in people's lives that have nothing to do with COVID that are still causing grief, anxiety, depression, all this stuff. So um, we are here for you. We appreciate you listening to us tonight. And we just, before we close out tonight, I just want to take a few minutes and see if anyone has any comments or questions. I know Stephen actually mentioned this to me earlier. I know he um, was suggesting, or he shared with me that he had written a letter, which I'm glad you brought that up because he'd written a letter that was very helpful to say things that he couldn't say before someone had died. So I'm yeah. glad, and he's sharing that again now in the chat. That's awesome, Stephen. Um, and, and, that's a great idea. And, yeah. and you can have different beliefs about the afterlife or, you know, even if you believe like that, you know, if you read the letter at their gravesite, like if you, don't, you believe like they're, they're not gonna actually hear it, doesn't matter it is for you and and you know just imagine that they're there and that they're hearing it um because that's going to help you and it's okay to do that you're, you're not like going crazy or being delusional thinking um now if you you know go years and you still think that they're really around that's a problem but <laughs> it's okay to do right. that during the grieving there's a lot right. of exceptions during the grieving process where, that, that are sure. okay to do sure i like what muse says too he says um after my dad passed away talking to my mom and other people who he was close to as well as thinking of good memories has been helping me cope with the loss that's yeah. awesome it's yeah. good it's just talking about it which is something we sometimes feel funny doing or we don't know if we should do and i think you know one thing that helped me that kind of reminds me of something with my grandparents like one thing i thought about when i was feeling sad especially with my grandfather because i really looked up to him a lot he was sort of like the patriarch of our family you know just the leader and he was always the one that kind of kept everyone together and I think when he died, the thing that I thought about when I was feeling sad and I was missing him and I was wishing I could like talk to him, get his advice about certain things in my life, I realized like, I mean, I do think he's still with me. And I was, I'd always think about like, you know, I want to do this for him. Like I want to be a success and I want to reach on my dreams because I know that's what he'd be saying right now is like, don't cry for me. I want you to go out there and just live your life and and remember everything i taught you you know and i think there's something kind of empowering about that because it's kind of like he's still with me and i'm living out so many of the things that he taught me and that i watched in his life you know so it's kind yeah. of like a way of him living on through me in a sense do you know what i mean like right right yeah like you're each generation you know the more you feed into and have an impact and influence on you know the you know your kids and and their kids yeah, there is a part of you. There is that wisdom. There is the things that you've found that to be valuable that that you know you've incorporated in, into your life. That you're like, this is a good thing for people to do for for you know an individual to do. And yeah, to have it carry on. You know, ideally, you know, each generation that person's getting you know a little bit more of it together sooner in their life. And, and right. you know, that's ideally what it is. Right, right. And Stephen says something else that's kind of important too. That yeah. sometimes we. And you probably saw that that sometimes you know when a relative passes away or, or a friend that's been suffering we can almost like even though we're feeling grief we also feel a sense of relief because right. their suffering's over so that can be kind of a mixed bag of emotions. Well, and, and also like um like, like my grandma my grandpa uh had, had uh, alzheimer's for like, like a dozen years or more and you know slowly got worse and worse and, and you know the last few years my grandma was just doing so much like she she had no life of her own it was just all like my grandpa and it was so much work and, and stress all the time like she was different um like she was just different than, than i'd ever seen her before in my life and you know when, when he you know finally passed away you know it was weird weird for her because that had basically been her whole life for years and years is just what are you know what's my husband's you know needs right now and and you know getting through each day and then when that's gone it's like oh like that sucks that he's gone but that's all this stress and, and work and constant anxiety fearing like where is he at in the house did he is he wandering around you know is he safe right all that's gone and that that is a relief and that is that is a the right. okay thing and a good thing and it, you know it's it's okay to to experience that relief right. and you don't have to feel guilty about it 
Right. Well, it's okay for us to want peace for the people we love because obviously suffering is uncomfortable, you know, and I think that's, yeah. you know, wanting them to be at peace and wanting their bodies to be healed, you know, and, you know, resting, and, you know, and, and don't put the pillow over their face yeah, though. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> not cool. Bad joke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> very funny um next week the, yeah. is all about euthanasia yeah it's just exactly. suicide. Yes. No. no 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 <laughs> stop no but it's really it's tough you know yeah. it's tough watching that and i also want to say something to kenneth here um that he's kenneth writes i found new friends online that have helped me with my grieving over my mom's recent death first of all kenneth i'm so sorry to hear for your loss uh we are thinking of you tonight with that that's so hard and i know i would be so it would be so hard for me right now to lose my mom i'm very close to her and we will be keeping you in our prayers. And I'm glad you're finding community. And I hope you know that you have community here too on the Susan page. And you yeah. should check out our, our, you know, our fan family because it's pretty awesome. So if we can help you in any way, let us know. And maybe this book would be a great source um, yeah. for you that Keith has mentioned tonight. You know, just as something else you can do because that's a major. You know, I think losing a parent is such a major loss. And it doesn't. You know, it's funny. Sometimes somehow we've normalized it because they're older. And we think, well, it's, you know, more normal for kids to lose parents than the other way around. But or we think still... of it until it happens to us. We think, oh, that's, you know, that's what happens. But... Right. But it's still hard because they've had it's like with my grandparents, like I had people, many people commented. They were like, well, he was 94 years old or however old he I think he was somewhere in there. He lived his life. Right. Exactly. And it's like that doesn't make it OK. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean right. like I was ready to say goodbye because he was actually really healthy for his age, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it, yeah, you're, really you're never going to be ready to right. say goodbye with it was relationship really value. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I think, you know, it's, I mean, that's where if you be careful to what we say, you know, cause it's like that kind of stuff isn't not necessarily helpful. Cause it's kind of like, I don't know. It's just, you, you can just tell the person, I have no idea what you're feeling, but I'm, you know, I'm sure this sucks. Like, let me know, you know, what you need. Um, right. yeah, you just ask the people. It's okay to ask. Right. Exactly. What can I do to help you? For sure. For sure. And Kenneth, thank you for, I'm so glad that it helped a little bit. I hope you know, we're with you and, and look, I mean, grief is something, um, that we've all experienced. And I know you're, he also writes in the chat that he's glad we had this chat about grief today. So I'm glad that it inspired you a little bit and hopefully it makes you feel a little less alone that we've all felt this awful, ugly emotion of grief and that there is, you know, there is hope beyond that, you know? So, so I, I wanted to say that with, uh, especially when, when you're watching somebody suffer with an illness, you know, for a right. while, it's not like a sudden death. Um, oh, dang, oh no. Okay. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep spacing out. Um, but you know, a lot of times, you know, when they pass away, like you're, you're thinking about them where they're at when they died, which, you know, usually looks like not who they were the rest of their life and the rest of the time you knew them usually it's you know this withered sickly you know shell of the person you knew and that can be very disturbing to kind of have that that image or you know when they're not able to take care of themselves and having to you know help them use the toilet or shower even you know it's like it can be hard when it's like oh this person used to take care of me now i'm doing the same with them it's just like a mind reversal that's super weird um and so, you know, once they're gone, you know, getting together with, you know, people that knew, knew the person, family, friends, and, you know, talk about the experience of, you know, going through the last days, weeks, uh, you know, of when they pass away. And, you know, once you've gotten that out, then, then start talking about, you know, the positive memories, like your best memories. And, you know, you can even write those down. Um, or if the, the, the loss was traumatic, write it down. And then, okay, you've got, you've got that trauma put down and it was it wasn't good but now start writing out the mem the positive memories and the more you know positive you know good memories you have the the more your brain when they think of that person is going to think of those things not just the the weeks leading up to their death or where they what they where they were at when they died right right no that's good that's good and you know i just want to address something else that muse says here he says there are a lot of questions i wish i could have asked my dad when he when they come up and I write the, you know, like I write them down and they bring up lots of memories. And I think, you know, that's really a good point that, you know, and I kind of, we kind of have addressed this a little bit today that, you know, when you think of that stuff, it is healthy to write things down and to, 
you know, it's kind of like a, maybe a combined effort of like having these conversations with people and talking about people that have had that, you know, shared relationship. And then also for your own, you know, time to spend time writing down questions and stuff. And maybe that would be something that would help you just write those, write everything down that you wanted to ask your dad, you know? Right. And, and, and if those, those, those questions are, you know, linger and, and you know, they kind of like stick with you and you like feel like you need to have them a answered, but you don't know how, um, you know, kind of go through e each one and be like, okay, um, is because some of these questions is like, there is no answer that you'll be satisfied with. And, you know, kind of taking the time to think about, oh, there is not, there is no satisfactory answer, even if the person was alive to answer it. And, you know, that can help you kind of move on from it. Um, or, you know, think about, is there someone else I can ask maybe about, you know, the person's life or some aspect of their life? Um, Sorry, I just read Keith is dropping straight facts here. <laughs> distracted me. Um, but yeah, and, and then figure out, okay, if this question, you know, can ever be answered and I'll never know the answer, um, you know, can I move on from it? You know, w w will I still be able to function, get on with life? And, you know, is it going to prevent me from doing something that's important? And kind of just taking the time to, to break that down and realize, yeah, you're going to always have questions and some of them aren't going to be able to be answered and that's okay. Right. Right. No, that's good. That's good. And I think that's too, where sometimes you have to have faith, you know, and, um, you know, there, there's a bigger picture to our lives, you know, than just what we experience, you know, here. And I think that's, you know, that's probably one of the biggest things that grief kind of brings up is really what you do believe and what, you know, what's happening spiritually in your life, because those are things that if you have a solid foundation, it becomes less scary. And it also gives you tools to be able to work through some of these things. So I mean, the mortality, I mean, right. if someone, you know, dies, or anybody dies, and you think about it, it, it makes you to some extent, think about your own own mortality. Sure. sure. And even if you, you know, you're a Christian, and you know, you know, you're going to heaven, it, it's still, a, you know, it can be a, a scary thing to think about, just because sure. it's like, I don't know what that's like, you know, sure. what is that like, you know, right. um, I don't know where to go that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still look, none of us know. I'm mean, obviously it's, all, it's still a mystery to all of us because here we are on planet earth and we're alive and we're trying to live our lives the best we can and figure it out and figure out why we're here and what we're doing. And I, and that's kind of a big part of my platform, as you guys know, is to try to provide inspiration and help you guys as you're, as we're all trying to figure out what our, what our purpose is and to make the most of our dreams, our talents, and how we can kind of have an impact on the world in a positive way, you know? And I think even in these dark moments of life, I think um, we have an opportunity to lean in and learn something and use it for something good. And I think that's the biggest takeaway that we always want from all this stuff, whether we're talking about a negative emotion or more positive one, um, but there is something that it teaches us, you know, it teaches us about ourselves, about what's important to us, and those are always good questions because if it makes us a deeper person, if it makes us someone that is more caring, if we can use it to be a blessing to other people, then it's not wasted. You know, and that's the biggest thing is not to waste our tears, you know, because right. we have an opportunity to use these experiences to make us better, you know, and not bitter, you know, because that's always the, the choice too, you know, because there's all there's always things that we can't control. We can only control so much, you know. And that's where faith comes in, you know, that maybe there's a bigger picture going on. You and know? and it, with that, um, when, you know, someone dies that you're close with, it, it can, you know, cause you to think about your own mortality and think about bigger existential questions like, you know, what, where do, what happens after death? You know, is there a, a soul? Where does the soul go? You know, which religions, right? Um, and, and if you don't really have, you know, answers that, you know, you are, to those questions that you've, you know, thought through and figured out during these, you know, times of, of grief and things where you're kind of forced with it head on, you may realize, oh, I have a lot of un unanswered questions that don't feel like it don't sit well with me. I'm not really content with that. And, you know, that may be something to maybe not, you know, write during the grieving process, but maybe write down somewhere. And, you know, when you're able to think about these things in more in depth, you know, think about that think think about these existential questions because right. they to some extent they'll always be in the back of your mind and you know it's a good thing to to think about to figure out and it helps you, you know, grow as a person helps you figure out life reality you know all all that um in, in much you know 
much more detail instead right. of just trying to avoid it and right. think, you know just you know, think of not think about death and just act like you're gonna live forever you know right no it's true it's very very true and i think that's kind of you know it goes along with what we're trying to say tonight i mean it's you know these these hard experiences are invitations to grow and i think i was listening to a podcast earlier today that was talking about that very thing that the greatest growth you will have as a person and i really believe this the greatest growth that you will have as a person is not going to come through the good times yep. it's going to come through the hard experiences that you go yep. through because it shows you a lot and, and i think that's something i've learned even through covid because i've had a lot of very difficult things happen this last year some i've shared some i haven't and the biggest thing that I go through when I reflect on this stuff is I always ask myself now, instead of just getting caught up in the, the emotion of what I'm feeling, I always kind of ask myself, like, what is the lesson here? Like, what am I supposed to learn? Like, there's something here that I'm supposed to learn. And I've learned so much, you guys. And that I, doesn't mean it turns it into a good thing or a positive no, exactly. thing. It's like, no, it, it can still be a, a bad, miserable thing, but you can, you can also glean something good and benefit and other people can benefit from it. So it can be both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Right. Definitely. Well said, well said. Cause it's not, uh, you know, we're not, and we're not saying any of these things are things that you want to like necessarily welcome, like woohoo grief, but yeah. I'm going to slaughter my whole family. I'm going to grow so much. Mm, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, Keith, <laughs> your sense of humor. My, my, my bad. I know. No. I am a professional no, no. psychologist. I know. But... I know. We know you're just kidding. So it's okay. <laughs> no, but it really is. It's very, uh, it's very hard. It's very hard to go through this stuff. But you know, but I believe in you guys, and I know that you're gonna all grow through the things that you're facing right now. So don't do it alone. Exactly, exactly. So we want to thank you again for joining us tonight for this episode of Scar Stories. We hope this discussion has helped you. We've certainly enjoyed chatting with each other and chatting with you guys. Um, and it looks like we've got one other question before we about sign off here. Steve, uh, the Steve Willens wondering how the grief says, process changed during the the pandemic. Um, yeah, I made it in regards to families not being able to be in the hospital with you know their their loved ones for lengthy periods of time, or you know their elderly you know people in in, in nursing homes that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, that 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 one you know. Um, elderly woman who had been married like 54 years and her husband was in, in the hospital for like a year before he died. She couldn't see him at all. Thankfully she was able to see him, you know, the last two weeks or, you know, talk to him at least. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, especially with the elderly things that you would be able to start going through the grieving process um, you know, while they're still alive and, and think about the questions that you want to ask them and, you know, get those, get those kind of final things done. Yeah. It, the it's it, the hospital regulations and, and all that have made it very um I, I, to me it's unethical it, it's so much worse to do that to somebody because yeah the one people the, the person dies but the, all the people that that have relationships with them they're still alive and and now that they're, they're experiencing grief in an even worse way when they didn't they necessarily have, have it. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, come on, let's figure out a way where we can have families be together, especially during the last days of their life. I mean, yeah. no one should die alone like that. That's yeah. awful. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. And if anyone's had to go through that, I really, our heart grows out to you tonight because that's really, um, that's really tough. And, and, you know, maybe some of these tools would even work at a higher level for you because you didn't get that closure and that chance to really say the things you want to say. And I, and I believe, you know, regardless of what anyone else is going to say tonight, I believe that your family will hear you. So I think that, you know, it, it's worthwhile. And you can always tell the, the people, friends or family, like, Hey, if, if I, I, it becomes too overwhelming or, or, you know, you just are, are like kind of reached your, your, your point saturation point of, you know, me kind of getting out my, my feelings or, or, you know, grief, let me know and and just just let them know that they can let you know and that way when you're sharing and and you know tell, talking to them about this you don't have to be thinking oh is this person really miserable and i'm really like you know making everything worse for them it's like no you know they'll tell you so that's a great thing to do whenever right. you're talking or venting on people just right right let me know if, if it's you when it becomes right much. right no that's awesome that's awesome advice Awesome, you guys. Well, thank you so much for all the like feedback and questions tonight. I'm really thank grateful that everybody uh, showed up for this and that we could talk about this really important issue. And, and again, we're going to put links to the sh in the show notes. The podcast version of the show will be released on Monday, so you can share it with your friends or anyone that maybe you know would benefit from listening to this discussion. So 
Um, we want to just thank you again for joining us. And I thank you again to my private fan club members for all the support you guys give. And if you're interested in that, we will um, have links in the show notes as always to that too. And I think Leon will probably throw up another link to that in our little chat. Um, so thank you so much, you guys, for just for joining us and for making this possible, all your support. And we will see you next week. Next week, we're going to talk about trauma. So Woo! Be, <laughs> continuing the fun train. <laughs> exactly. But hey, you know what? Let's We're tackling this stuff and we're hopefully yeah. giving you guys some tools because you know what? It's stuff that we all... It's stuff we all deal with, right? So that was kind of the point of the series. So we promise the next series is going to be like a little more up and happy. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I could, yeah, I could use that. <laughs> I know it. I know it. But hey, this is important stuff because this is where people yeah. are right now. No, you know? I, I do enjoy talking about this and, and sure. helping people out with it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, you guys. Well, thanks again for listening tonight. We hope you guys have an amazing evening and we will see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. All right. So take care. Peace out. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Scar Stories. If you like what you hear, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Life can hit you hard, and it's easy to quit. Whatever your scar story, it matters. You got this.